In this video, I'm going to talk about a subject that everyone wishes they didn't need to know about, and that's how to record a, an NSF check or a bounce check from one of your customers. So I'm going to start out just by putting in a, an invoice. We'll use our customer, Williams, and we'll date that April 1st, and let's say this is invoice number 1234. And it was for $100, and we'll let it calculate the tax on there, and we'll save that. Now we'll go into receive money from customer. And let's see, paid that with check 9786. Also paid it on the first. And for the full amount, we'll save that. And now I've already got a customer transaction history report open. So we can see that looks just like what we would expect. We've got the invoice, we've got the payment applied to it. Balance on that invoice is zero. And the customer's total balance is zero right now. But let's say that then um, a couple days later we get a notice from our bank that the check did not clear. So now they've charged us an, an NSF check charge and we're going to pass that on to our customer. Now even if you don't want to pass that fee on to your customer, I'd still recommend you use this method because it will make things so much easier and you can easily adjust that off the customer's balance later. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to bill the customer for the bank charge. So we'll start entering our new invoice and we'll say this was on the third. And because I left this window open it incremented the invoice number for me but we're going to call this 1234 NSF. So we're going to use the original invoice number with NSF tacked on the end. And then you can put in, um, you know, whatever description you want. And then for the GL account, um, you could put this to um, like another income, or uh, and, and other income would be common if you mark up the uh, the fee that the bank passes on. So if the bank charges you twenty dollars and you charge your customer forty dollars then you probably want to throw it into other income. Or if you just pass on the fee directly as it comes from the bank, then you might want to put it to bank charges. That'll lower your total bank charge expense. And we'll say we're just going to pass on the uh, exact fee from the bank, and it was $20. Now, when I enter that, you'll notice it calculates sales tax on that, which we don't want to happen. So there's two ways you could deal with that. You could just come up here and mark it as exempt or you could just take the sales tax authority out entirely and then this report this transaction wouldn't even show on your taxable exempt sales report so I'll leave it like that and uh, oh and also I forgot to say if you don't have this column here for GL account then the way you get that to show up is uh, back here uh, from the main menu if you go to the options and then global You'll see that right here on the accounting tab, the high general ledger accounts, you will see that there's a check mark next to accounts receivable. So it's hiding the GL account column. You just uncheck that and click OK. And then uh, and then that column will show up. If you've left if this window is open while you're doing that, you'll probably have to close it and reopen it. You may even have to uh, close the company and reopen it to get it to show up. But so I'm going to save that new invoice where we're where we're invoicing them for the bank charge. Let's go back now and look at our customer transaction history report. So there's the original invoice paid off. Now we've got a new invoice for $20. So now we need to fix our, our cash and we need to get this $107 back on the customer's balance because they owe us that money still. So we're going to go to receive money from customer. And we'll fill in our customer ID. And for the check number, I would take the original check number with NSF on the end. And then use the same date as the invoice, the date the money came out of your bank account. So you're going to come down here to the amount paid, and you're going to say minus 107. That was the amount of the, of the check that was returned. So we save that. And then let's go and look at our 
transaction history report again. And now we can see that that $20 invoice you know, has now gone up by $107 because we applied a negative payment to it, so it has a balance of $127. If we double click on this too, we can also see here in the invoice window our $20 invoice. Other applied credits is minus $107, so $127 due. So at this point, the customer's balance is correct again. So um, then at that point, you can handle it just like normal. So you know, when the customer pays you, you can just come back in to receive money, just like normal. Fill in the customer ID, fill in the check number, the date they paid you again, and then um, we just mark it paid. Now, here we're assuming that they that they paid the NSF check charge. If they didn't pay it, um, and we're not going to try to collect it from them, then you can put the amount of the of the fee there in the discount field and then the amount paid will be just the amount that they actually paid you and this will clear the, the total balance and then down here for the discount account um, and that's off the screen now so you can't see that so I'll change it up well you can you can uh, just change this account to Whatever account you used when um, you know when you invoice them for that that uh, bank fee, you could also change that up here in the journal screen if you wanted to, where it shows the discount taken. You could change that uh, that account there. And so that's it. That's all there is to handling a uh, yeah a return check from a customer. Um, I've seen people try to come up with other ways to do it, um, but this is really the easiest way. Even if you don't want to charge the customer for the 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 bank fee, go ahead and then invoice them for it. That makes the rest of the workflow really easy, and you can just write it off at the end through the discounts field. Um, hope that's helpful to you.